Joining us right now is Mark Grant. He is Chief Global Market Strategist at B. Riley FBR. Mark, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Becky. All right, so what do we do with this? Um, Fed says it's probably not going anywhere for a very long time. I think they assume their next move is going to be higher. We've had other people come in and say the next move is going to be lower. What do you think? I think the Fed is in a locked up position right now for a couple of reasons. One, the economy is doing relatively well, but there's no inflation. Two, the ECB, as you know, we have almost 16 trillion at the moment of negative yielding debt. And don't kid yourself, that puts a lot of pressure on the Fed to protect the United States. To not raise rates. Yeah. To not raise rates. And three, you've got this political turmoil going on, and we don't, they don't want to mess up the market. But what I say right now, the 10 years at a 1.8 percent. I've been doing this for a very long time. This is a borrower's paradise, and it's hell for uh, fixed income investors, for seniors, retirees, pension funds. I was just uh, yesterday with uh, Cornell talking to their investment committee uh, about reallocating their assets. And, you know, it's very difficult when there's no yield to uh, figure out quite what to do. What, what's the solution for some of these big pension players or endowments or, you know, places that really have to invest their money? Or do they need to push further out on the risk, on the risk term? Well, that's one of the things that they're doing. And uh, as I said, having done this a very long time, a lot of mistakes are going to get made with that. Uh, there's one area of the market that uh, you can find yield, which are closed-end funds. You talked about that. Well, I was talking with them about that. But there's almost no place else in the markets to find any kind of decent yield. Even the, the, uh, like the, uh, one of the main indexes for high yield is only like 5.4%. You know, we're looking at the 10-year right now, and it actually just fell below 1.8% at 1.798. We saw it push up uh, to well past 1.84 or so right. last week after we got those very strong jobs number. I guess this is the reaction to what the Fed says, which is, okay, Rates are going nowhere. Rates are going nowhere. So what does that tell you about the stock market? Will it make it more attractive for stocks just as an alternative to incredibly low yields in treasuries? I think one of the reasons the stock markets are where they are now is because yields are so low. It's pushed pension funds, university endowments, all kinds of seniors, retirees out of the uh, fixed income markets because they can't afford to be in the fixed income markets and pushed them in the more uh, risky bed of the equity market. The weird story earlier this week, was it a Monday that the Wall Street Journal was reporting about how much money's been pulled out of stock market funds by investors, that there are so many that are still holding back? I guess they're not the investors you just talked about, but if those investors still have concerns and still aren't in it, does that mean stocks could push up from here? They could push up from here, but I think the valuations are high. I think we're a little toppy. I'm not calling for any you know, big drop off, but I think we're a little toppy here. I also feel like after the huge run we've had, I mean, it was a great year for bonds, it was a great year for equities, everything performed, and I think we're ending, you know, he heading to the end of that cycle, and it's going to be an interesting year, but I expect returns next year, both in equities and debt, are going to be a lot less than they were. Uh, but for you, think about the the great stocks that that are yielders and this is the whole Ben Graham and Dodd reason or Graham and Dodd reason to invest in stocks dividends can go up over time so I just looked at three Chevron four percent Pfizer three point eight percent AT&T five point three percent so you have principal risk because the stocks can go down obviously right. and th <laughs> right right but they go down maybe earnings go down because of a recession which keeps rates low so the dividend you know I, it, it just there's a lot of lot to like in those even for if you pick 20 of them so that you don't have AT&T specific problems, you don't have oil problems, but you pick 20 yielders of three and a half to, to 5%, and, isn't, and you might get, instead of principal risk, you may actually get capital appreciation too. Isn't that the way to go, don't you think? I think that is a way to go and a decent way if to go. If we're going to stay low that. with rates too, which what is what well, you're... The other, thing, well, the other thing we're seeing, which I want to point out, is most of the time when we're looking at yields, we're talking about relative value of one thing to another. Mm -hmm. We're, rates right now are so low, the major insurance companies, and a lot of the, I talk to a lot of them, they can't afford to buy public bonds. They can't afford to buy public bonds. So you're seeing a big shift, not so much out of equities, but into private equity, private placements, all that, kinds of is alternatives. That a place, I mean, if you don't think we're bubbly here in the market, even though you think we might be toppy, if you look at those alternative investments, are they getting 
bubbly? Are they getting to the point where there's so many investors that are forced into them, they're smaller places? Yeah, here's what's happened, Becky. So as interest rates go this low, and when you go from 5% to 1.8%, it's great for, for instance, real estate, all kinds of assets because the borrowing costs. We see more stock buybacks, we see all kinds of things. But as you approach zero, you start losing uh, the value and going from 1.8 to 1.4 isn't going to move the needle very far and I think we're beginning to see that.